Welcome to the Biz Bash podcast, where we make biz strategy a piece of cake. I'm Elizabeth. And I'm Cammie, but you might know us better as Eliza and Calligraphy and Cammie Monet. We want to help you, our fellow stationers, artists, and calligraphers, confidently build a profitable and personality-driven creative biz. We're here to share our honest-to-goodness advice and actionable strategies for ambitious artists. So put on your party hat, quit being a procrastinator gator, and let's get this party started. Hey guys, it's Q and Cake number 14, where we answer all of your questions that you submit to us at bizbirthdaybash.com slash Q and Cake. These are our rapid fire episodes where we read the questions aloud and just kind of go for it. They're never planned, which stresses me out, but it's fine. We're going to do good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and read the first question here. This one. Oh, but wait. wait. I have something to say. I'm a fun fact. Okay. Elizabeth has a fun (laughs) fact to share. (laughs) If we've done 14 and we average about five questions per episode, we've answered 70 questions. So I feel like that deserves like a round of applause. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) Now you can ask the first question. Oh, okay. Perfect. Um, The first question is from Chrissy from Chrissy. Uh, you can just set it right here, Alex. I'm sorry. He's <laughs> bringing me coffee. <laughs> All right. Oh, she's getting her coffee delivered. It's so cute. It's the sweetest. Um, okay. I remember Chrissy asked us one and I mispronounced her name and then she corrected us and I forgot how she pronounced it. But I think it's Chrissy Vitali. Yes. Uh-oh. Do you remember she corrected <laughs> us and I forgot? So I'm so sorry, Chrissy. <laughs> anyway. Her question is, I have a question about wedding sites, specifically the knot and wedding wire. Do you think it is important to have listings and reviews on those kinds of sites? I think that (laughs) – I think it changed so much because, like, now they've merged and they're the same thing. So it makes it even more confusing for everybody. The only benefit I truly see of it anymore is that it's kind of like an additional – form of social proof, if that makes sense. So when I ask for reviews from my clients, I first and foremost direct them to Google every time because I want, that's like my home base for reviews. But I say, I'm like, if you're feeling generous, it would be wonderful if you could copy and paste that onto the knot slash wedding wire when you're done, just to have another version of it there. So if people do find me and they do find my business, and for some reason are like qualifying people by going to Wedding Wire and the Knot to see what other people say. Like at least I exist in that corner of the world, but I wouldn't have to say that that is like a predominantly super important strategy because I know that Cami doesn't exist on there like at all. No, I do actually. Right? No, I exist. You do. I exist on there. Okay. I think it's good to exist on there and do the free listing. I have some reviews on there from like my first clients. But I would not put stock into it, to be honest. And I I do think like, I think there's been a shift over like the past few years of the industry where these just aren't as important anymore. Uh, Or these particular sites in general, like that's not where people are finding their vendors. It's more like Instagram and referral. And it's just a different landscape for marketing. And I, I don't think that's like the one place to find vendors anymore. So I think it's good to exist, have the free listing on there. I do get like some leads from that. Not one of them has ever been a qualified lead where they've actually filled out my form or like had a budget that was like more than a hundred dollars. Like I'm not kidding you guys. So, so I, yeah, so I don't really think it's important at all. I'd say get the free listing because it never hurts to have, you know, your name out there, but I would not purchase any ads or like put a ton of time in trying to make those things perfect. I don't even think I have like updated photos on mine. I know it's like the really old style shoot ones I used to do, Elizabeth, you know what I'm talking about? With like ripped paper and gold calligraphy. So it's not even accurate, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're very important. So <laughs> yeah, I know. I would agree. The time for those has like passed. I feel yeah. Like, anyways. Yeah. And I think your ultimate goal is to be like in the favor of other vendors and like wedding planners and stuff who are going to refer you via word of mouth because that has more power at the end of the day. So that's where I would put my effort and I'm trying to put my effort currently. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Do you want me to do the next one? Hey gals, I have Dubsado per your recommendation and I love it, but I feel like I'm not using the software to its fullest potential. And do you have any tips for using Dubsado like a boss? Thank you so much. And this is from Brooke at Siren Script. 
And I feel like, well, yes, we have a lot we could say about Dubsado. Maybe we should do like a full Dubsado episode to really talk about how we use it. But I would say that some of the biggest ways I've gotten help for Dubsado is by a, going into their Facebook group. That was going to be one of my tips. <laughs> and like searching, <laughs> yeah, like searching stationery or calligraphy or wedding invitations because people who do the same things as, as us have undoubtedly shared their forms or things before the way that they're doing things. But also they have like a ton of free webinars and great online resources and blogs too. So I would just start like reading a ton of that stuff because once you understand the platform better, you can understand how to leverage it to your business, whether that is stationary, calligraphy, whatever you're doing um, to make yourself even better. But I know Cami has some good tips too. Um, yeah, well, one of mine was going to be go to the Facebook group and just be a to- total creeper because <laughs> there are so many good things. Like even if you're not looking at stuff in our industry, like looking at what other people are doing um, is always really helpful to see like, oh, I didn't even realize you- this was a, like a feature or whatnot. So I always like find new tips there. And it's, it's always fun to see how actual people are using it versus just like knowing what the feature is, but seeing how people utilize it. Like, for instance, one of the things I saw, someone had, like, changed their portal banner image, and I was like, I didn't even know that was a thing. So then it became, like, part of me adding that into my dub side of things. So I just I just learned a lot from there. And they do have tons of free trainings. I think they do, like, a live training, like, once a week or something with Cameron, and he does awesome stuff. And I feel like I actually need to tune in on that because I've been using Dubsado the same way for so long. I know I'm, like, there's new yes. so many new things that I'm not even... Me too. Taking advantage of because I'm like, I have everything going. It's all working, but there's more. <laughs> like there's always more. Mm-hmm. But for me, another big tip would be to just start making things as templates for everything. I mean, now that I have all the templates for like my proof form, my lookbook, my questionnaire, everything is a template that I've saved. Um, and I, I tweak those constantly because as I'm like, sometimes I'll be like, oh, I really want to add in this question. So I'll go back and add it. So I'm just constantly like, updating those certain proof forms or um, questionnaires. So having those in place is like the key to using Dubsado like a boss because it makes everything really quick and really streamlined. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. Having all of those set up. It's like your canned emails, but like having your templates ahead of time. Oh, and then of course, um, personalizing it as much as possible. Like make sure you swap out your brand colors and all those, put in your logo, all those things that are like really small, but I I feel like make a difference in terms of the branding. So (laughs) yes, I'm so excited to give my Dubsado forms and like my whole Dubsado experience a full rehaul once I like know the direction my brand's headed and all that good stuff. There's so much I want to do, but I just like feel like such a sitting duck because I'm You're like waiting. twiddling my fingers and waiting. And but hopefully by the time this episode comes out, I'll like have some of that yeah branding stuff. Yeah. So That's I'm exciting. excited. <laughs> oh, and then also don't forget if you haven't tried Dubsado and you want to be like Brooke and love it, then you can use code BizBirthdayBash to get 20% off your first month or year when you sign up. Yep. And don't forget, there's always a learning curve. Like I would say it has taken me, it took me a while to like get a good grip on it. And I'm still learning things because they're always introducing new things like Cami said. So it's hard to keep up. (laughs) Yeah. Like if you feel overwhelmed, don't give up. Just start with like a couple of really simple things. Like I'm going to do my contract and that's my goal. Or today my goal is to like make a template for sending sketches to my client. Like don't feel like you have to do it all at once. Like list out what you want to accomplish and kind of start tackling it in small bites. That is a really good And tip. then you will truly use Dubsado like a boss. And then you will okay. conquer Dubsado. Okay, sorry. <laughs> and you will build your, <laughs> empire, build your empire. And you will destroy. <laughs> and you will destroy HoneyBook. Just kidding. We love HoneyBook too. Oh my gosh. I know. I'm sorry. I made it awkward. Okay. <laughs> We love our honey bookers. Our honey bookers. Um, we love our honeybees. Yes. Do they call their users honeybees? Because they really should. <laughs> I know. That's a missed opportunity. If they are really? not, they need that's to. That's so, so freaking funny. cute. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, watch in two weeks. They like roll something I out. I know. And all of their users are honey- honeybees. It happened here first. <laughs> <laughs> um. Next one. Why don't you read it, Cammy? I think it's your turn. Okay. It says, hi, guys, would you ever do an episode on SEO or how to get more clients from Google and social media? I don't shout out my location often because my services are all online. I don't feel confident that brides and grooms can find me on the World Wide Web. She didn't say that. She just said web. <laughs> Any help would be appreciated. Thank you. And of at Ann Callahan Designs. 
and Callahan. That's so fun to say. I know. <laughs> I love how that flows together. I've always loved that in her handle name. Well, I mean, Anne Callahan, I think it's just her name, which is, gosh, I love it. So it's like Anna Green Gables or like an author's name or something. Yeah. Ooh, I'm looking at her Instagram. It's really beautiful. <laughs> we have so many people. Oh my gosh. So many people that follow us and you guys like use our resources and stuff and your work is breathtaking. Like seriously incredible. So if we ever sign up for your email list or anything, don't get creeped out. We're just like stalking you out of love. (laughs) I love all of you guys. You guys are all like so amazing. Like, I don't know why you ever listen to anything I say. I want to learn from you. (laughs) Um, Okay. But what was the question? About SEO. So (laughs) yeah, the best thing you can do for yourself if you want like our straight up SEO advice, or I should say camis, is that if you have the business sense for creatives. Wow, I can think really well today and speak well. If you have business sense for creatives and which I think you might, I would go back and reference the SEO guide because that was like one of the PDF party favors included and that will totally get you started. Yeah, it's um, the SEO cheat sheet and it basically goes over short tail keywords, long tail keywords, how to get found based on location, like where you should be putting your keywords how to find these keywords and like other derivative keywords from those keywords, just keywords, keywords, keywords. Okay. (laughs) And it will definitely help you get found on Google because that was, that's really huge for us is um, making sure we're tied correctly on our websites. And I know Elizabeth, I think you started using keywords that were more location based because you did want to like target more of the Atlanta Mm -hmm. market or if you are trying to get more local brides, yeah, definitely want to use keywords that have your location or like your region. Built yeah, in. I get a ton of people that find me locally for calligraphy, which is what I want. Like if I do yeah. a la carte calligraphy, I want to be doing it locally. I don't really want someone shipping their envelopes across the country for just calligraphy. And so I do like Atlanta calligrapher, Marietta calligrapher. I use those a lot. But like the wedding invitations, I tend to avoid area specifics because I, of course, want to do anyone all over the country. And like most of my clients are in Georgia anyway. So yeah, but like, yeah, it can be it can be kind of like product specific in that way or service specific where you pair or like style specific. Yeah, yeah. Where you pair your location with like just calligraphy or it, I could have done like Atlanta wood signs. I could have done that a ton if I had wanted to um, Atlanta wedding signs. Like I could have used all of those keywords, but yeah, SEO is just kind of like, it's kind of like almost this muscle you have to flex because I remember for me, it took a while for it to click. Like it kind of reminded me of like being an eighth grader trying to figure out like algebra <laughs> in my algebra two class. <laughs> And you're kind of like doing the equation over and over and over. And then one of the times you do it, you get it. And you actually understand how you got that result and why it happened and why it worked for you. And I think like SEO is Mm -hmm. so similar to that. It's about like pulling those keywords, experimenting. It's all kind of like this big equation and seeing how it works with Google. And when you can search like one of those keywords, like I'm pretty sure if you search Atlanta calligrapher, I am like one of the top tops. I'm going to do it right now. But it feels great like when it works. Yeah, when your SEO is on point. Yeah, and it's just it's knowing like the right keywords you need to use both long tail and short tail and where to put them. Like those are like the two keys of like knowing which ones and where to put them. So the SEO cheat sheet goes over that like the basics of everything. And I mean, you can go so deep into this, but that's like the general overview that will literally get you started and like get you results. But you know, obviously it can go much deeper. Yeah. You're the first person that comes up for Eliza and calligraphy. I am. Yeah. Under Atlanta calligraphy. Um, under Atlanta calligraphy. Especially, yeah. Yeah. Especially under the locations thing. And then because the only other things that come up are like the not.com calligraphy recommendations. Then there's calligraphy Atlanta.com, which of course that's going to win on SEO every time. Yeah. Thumbtack has this like 10 best calligraphers in Atlanta article. And then there's me. So yeah, I've gotten like a, a lot of calligraphy inquiries lately, which is that awesome. Is awesome. <laughs> so cool. So yeah, I'm having a lady is dropping off some tomorrow. So that's actually been like, it's been such a blessing in disguise for me that I've Literally, guys, like I do not get calligraphy clients from Instagram. I get them purely from SEO. That is so fascinating. And in a season of like 
like redoing my website, rebranding. I know you guys are so sick of hearing me talk about this. Uh, Elizabeth, are you rebranding? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I, I don't it. know. I have not talked about this enough, but in the season, like this has been my funny, like almost anchor service that it's like, I continue to get like really good inquiries for this. And it's awesome because that's all, I mean, I pay the taxes on what I make, but it's like, it's my time and that's very it because they bring me the envelopes. <laughs> nice and huh? easy. I said it's very straightforward. Huh? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Super you graceful. You sound like a freaking grandma when you're like, come on in. Huh? What? Huh? What are you saying? Elizabeth just Elizabeth just Liz- made an appearance Liz- there for a moment. Has entered the chat. Okay. Oh, jeez. But yeah, SEO gets me excited. It's super cool. Cami is like the SEO boss. And so the fact that she put together this SEO cheat sheet for the like party favors was amazing. Should we like break those out separately and sell them as little PDF I've guides? kind of wondered that before, but I think part of the magic is they, I feel, I feel like, like they, they do lost. get lost, but part of the magic is everything being in a bundle, but we could always make like a super, like a much more in length SEO product. What if we expanded it? What if we expanded yeah. it, you know, and did like a PDF download of that because I feel like everyone has questions and maybe they don't want to buy the whole thing. I don't know. It's just, they get yeah. lost sometimes. So we will discuss, but that's the best place to start. Anyway, if you guys like that idea, send us a DM and let us know. We'll, we'll think on it. So, right. Basically, like you have a lot of different ways if you're using Squarespace or like any website you're using has different ways ways that you can like enter these keywords so like and a lot of this will depend on what you're using but i would recommend like looking up blog posts too like good seo for my shopify site or good seo for my squarespace site and you can find blogs and help articles that will specifically point out how to do like the best methods for the type of site you have does that make sense cammy because everything's kind of different Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 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 yeah (laughs) <laughs> oh, okay. okay um this is from laura of blooming tree studio and she asks hello ladies have either of you attended bridal shows as vendors do you think they're worth the investment of the booth rental decor for your booth takeaways for potential clients your time etc when it comes to weddings i mainly focus on wooden signs and day of items but i've been playing around with adding invitation design to my services and i can't decide whether this would be a good investment for exposure and potential leads or a total waste of time and energy that could be focused someplace else <laughs> Did you read that in one breath? <laughs> I might have. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I did. I think I did take one in the middle because it was a few sentences. But I know we've touched on this occasionally. Oh, wait, this is from Laura of at Blooming Tree Studio. Yeah, I just said it at the beginning. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's I okay. Laura, you got a double shout out. Guys, this is from Laura at Blooming Tree Studio. <laughs> Laura <laughs> at Blooming Tree Studio. That's at Blooming Tree Studio. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, infomercial when it's like oh. oh my gosh i'm looking at her instagram right now she's got the cutest kitty <laughs> oh yay fellow cat person okay so first of all before we dive into like our answer for this i said dive in sorry it's like our new like curse word on this show so every time we say dive in we're like dang it um <gasps> I want to tell you guys that if you want to participate in really fun live Q&A sessions with us, you should become a member of the A to Z directory because we had a very, very lengthy, in-depth discussion about this in our January Power Hour Q&A, which like our monthly live Q&A sessions now for any of our A to Z directory members. So if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, go to bizbirthdaybash.com slash directory to read all about what the directory is about and about our Facebook group and all that great stuff. Because I had deja vu when I read this question. I did too. I thought we'd answer it in the last one. So now I'm glad you said it was in the power hour. I couldn't remember. Yes, it was in the January power hour. So those people got like our live like response about it. And we had like a really good conversation. But yeah, needless to say, that was like way more in depth than a few minutes on a podcast will ever be. And you guys get to ask us whatever the heck you want in those and have them answered. Basically like having a free consultation call with both of us every month, like live. And we do them at different times. So you can join it and the replays are always in there for all of our members. It's like an exclusive perk of being an A to Z directory member. It's awesome. (laughs) Yeah. New to 2020. Anyways, 
back to the question from Laura of Blooming Tree Studio. <laughs> Well, Laura, we love you. We hope you don't mind that we're having like way too much fun right now. Um, Okay. I got super sneaky lately. I attended a bridal show. Like, yes, I'm a vendor, but I did not pay. I just went and like schmoozed the other vendors that were there. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. And I kind of like, I kind of wanted to see what they were all about. But I would recommend that if you're thinking about doing one of these, Like, let's say the company that approached you or the bridal show that approached you does them two times a year. I recommend going to one first and seeing what it's like and asking the other vendors, how is it going for you? Like, just go to one first and pay just the bridal admission, which is usually like 20 bucks, and walk around before deciding that you want to commit and do one yourself. Because then at least you like you understand the layout of the space. And you can get ideas of like what other people have done and be like, Oh, I really liked what they did in their booth or Oh, that didn't seem to work as well. So doing that and like walking two shows rather recently within the past like month or so gave me the confidence that like, if I wanted to do one in the future, I would kind of know how to go about it. But I think 90% of the battle with these is actually (laughs) follow-up. It's like not whether or not you do the show and like, yeah, it's a lot of money and prep, but it's actually the success lies in the follow-up. I can't stress that enough. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Like the success definitely lies in the follow-up. And I think it's going to depend on like the type of bridal show. I feel like I just said all this and I don't know if you guys heard or not, but like some bridal shows are geared more towards like the DIY brides, some are more high end. So you want to just make sure like that the right client that you are looking for is going to be at these bridal shows. And I noticed you talked about you focus on wooden signs and day of items. And honestly, I think those would do great at a bridal show versus invitations. So if I was to do a bridal show, I would probably like say, oh, I do invitations as well. But I would like go all in on like one thing, which would be my signature drink signs, because I feel like those are an easier price point to sell versus all my custom wedding invitations. I feel like that's a really high dollar item. And it's harder to make those connections at a bridal show. I don't know why. Yes, I I don't know. I just don't feel like they're like ready to like make that cold purchase. But like something like a signature drink sign could be an impulse buy. So for you, maybe like those wooden signs, like the wooden welcome signs everyone loves like that could be an easy sell at a bridal show and getting that follow-up for them um so i only did i only done one wedding show and it was very small and it was not productive so i'm probably never gonna go (laughs) well i am like a preferred vendor for a marietta venue Mm -hmm. so i'm actually gonna like have a table at their like open house night at the end of February. Oh, cool. But that's also like a little different than a bridal show because yeah. I don't have to like pay a ton of money for a table. I just like get to be there, which is actually really exciting. <laughs> okay. This is different than a bridal show too. Cause I was like at a venue and they were doing like, a, it was a free thing and I, I mean, I didn't pay, but that's like the closest experience I yeah. have. To but it's still show. like, it's still in the same realm, but I would yeah. say that the biggest problem you have with bridal shows is that, well, a, a lot of times brides just come to walk these for fun with their friends because like it's fun to do with your bridesmaids or other people when they've already have their vendors nailed down but the other thing is like from a budget perspective people who are investing a lot a lot of money into a wedding probably won't set foot in one of these because they're going to go directly to a wedding planner for recommendations that's just kind of the reality of it like they're not spending the time sourcing vendors on their own or spending the time going to something like this that's kind of like the general feeling i've gotten what would you say no i completely agree i do think like the types of clients that you know, are wanting to do really high end custom invitations aren't going to these bridal shows. But you know, if your business model is more like a semi custom line or something like that, like, maybe there is some room for that. So I mean, I'm not going to say like either way, like they're good or bad, but it's going to depend on like, you as an individual and your business. I think with semi custom, especially there is room for that. Because I will tell you, like, going to these, there are not a lot of like invitation vendors, at least the two that I went to, not a single one. And I'm like, if someone could fill the space besides, I think like Zazzle or Zola was there Mm -hmm. or something and they have invitation lines. But if someone could fill that space, like you would target the market for that entire bridal show of being the only one there with a semi-custom collection. And that is much easier to sell than, you know, fully custom. Yeah. 
But I would say for like the wooden signs too, I was thinking that like for the bridal show specifically, you should have like three styles of welcome signs and like all you customize is their names. And like you just sell like kind of what Cammie said about like the drink canvas. You just sell like welcome wooden signs. Yeah. (laughs) Like try to get them like booked there and then you can like upsell them after the fact, like follow up later. Um, to try to book other things with them. Basically, you know? keep it super simple for them because they're already so overwhelmed. They're at this vendor show with like a thousand people trying to sell them something. So if you're like, I just do this welcome sign, the show special, it's 250 bucks or whatever. And then you get the sale, you get their email, and then you can like talk to them about more stuff later down the road. You know what I mean? So that's mm-hmm. kind of how I would approach it if I was to do one at this point. Yeah, because a lot of vendors will do things like for today only yeah. if you sign up. Like, you can get this sign for $150 instead of $250. Yeah. And if that's your strategy, just, like, get them in the door to try to upsell them later, it'll work pretty well in your favor. But like I said, 90% of the battle with this is follow-up, and that is not a joke. You need to have a way where you are collecting emails, you are collecting contact information, and you need to have a plan in place, whether it's an automated email series, whatever it is, it should most likely be an automated email series. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, Yeah. (laughs) That you're going to be contacting these people, like, I would say, like, every three days after the show ends that they need to, like, be getting an email from you about something for, I don't know, I would do, like, 10 emails. That's not even a joke. If you did an email every three days for 10 days, that's a month of like you trying to connect with them and follow up with them. And you can use MailChimp, ConvertKit, Flowdesk, whatever to make this little automated email series. And there you go. Your follow-up's done for you. And see, Elizabeth would just have that ready to go, all prepped and ready. And I'd be like, what am I doing? But no, seriously, have the follow-up. It's very important. Yeah. I think for this thing at the end of February, I'm going to take my iPad and I'm going to have a landing page for people to sign up for more information. And when they sign up for that, like they will go into an automatic funnel to get things from me. Yeah. But I really kind of want Flowdesk because it's so beautiful. But um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm doing a rebrand and I don't have my look yet. So I can't really oh do gosh. that. <laughs> I know. So you're doing a rebrand? Hey, you know what, Cammy? When you start yours in March, it'll be all you can talk about too. It like consumes everything. <laughs> I know. I know. She's asked me to fill out this like one thing and it's been like three months and I haven't done it. So I probably need to do that. Gotta do that. <laughs> I gotta get my SEO terms to Catherine. So speaking of SEO, it's like I need to let her know what I want my main ones to be. So I got to do my homework. Oh, you're doing your homework for your rebrand? This <laughs> <Okay, so laughs> last question. <laughs> Hi, guys. If a client has guests from out of the country, what kind of postage do you include for the RSVP envelope? And this is from page of at page underscore by design. Page by design. Yeah, I actually saw this question come up in a different like stationary, some sort of stationary Facebook group the other day. And I then I saw that we got this question on Q and Cake around a similar time. So I don't know if you're the a page if you also asked it in a Facebook group and I happened to see it. But I felt enlightened because I was always kind of confused about this too, Cami. But the answer is actually very simple. You don't put any on it. Oh, I thought, well, I mean, that's an option. <laughs> Here's what I here's what I'm doing for one that's coming up. Yeah, don't put any on it because it needs to have the postage of that country on it. Yes. So that if you put nothing on it, then they can put their country stamps on it to get it back to you because the US stamps don't matter in other countries, basically. Um, so like a wedding that I'm doing that's in Colombia, she's gonna source some of the stamps for me from Colombia to put in there so I can help assemble them. But um, she is actually taking them to Colombia to mail. So anyway, so half of them are being mailed in Colombia, half in the US. So the ones, the RSVPs that are going there will have postage from that country that we're putting on there. But also handy tip, you can also get the global stamp from USPS and it works for any country in the world. It's like that little succulent one. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. The are you sure forever stamp? Yes. The global forever stamp. Any country will send that? Yeah, it's it's the global forever stamp, okay? <laughs> I thought it just went global because, like, you could send something international from the U.S. No, it's the forever international rate stamp. <gasps> it's used to be mail and one ounce letter to any country which first class mail international service is available. Yeah, it's to any country, not from any country. I thought you could put it on that one, too. <laughs> I don't think. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> 
I feel like I read that somewhere, so maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, I haven't done that, but I thought you could, so maybe not. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I'm. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's just like global, as in from the U.S. Okay, yeah, yeah. maybe that's correct. Because there's like a global poinsettia as well, but it's it's confusing because it the global confusing. they just use the word global instead of international. Oh uh, yeah, okay, so it's only outgoing, not in ingoing. Um, so yeah, so either don't put a postage stamp or get one from the stamps from the actual country. Yeah, I would probably err on the side of just like not doing it because <laughs> mm-hmm. you never know what I don't know. If your bride came me as sourcing them, that will probably be totally fine because she knows what to look for. Yeah, like I'm working with with her on it, so I would say you're gonna need like some input um, from your client probably on this. Because so, yeah, uh, or you could also say, why don't we just do online RSVPs for the guests that are like international and like you know, well that would work in this instance because we are doing a huge print like half and half, like hundred invitations for Colombia, hundred for US, so we could do like. One's in Spanish and one's in English. So we could technically do. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Yeah, it's really cool. So with that, we could technically do online RSVPs. We've talked about either doing that or the postage uh, or the Colombian postage. But if you're printing it one time, you know, you don't want to have like a separate Mm -hmm. thing. You could do like a little separate insert card. Lots of ways to do it. But um, hopefully that was semi-helpful. Don't use the global stamp. I'm sorry, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, so funny i saw yeah i saw another tip on there that was interesting i think and i, I can't remember what it was but i want to say that it was a bride a foreign bride who had a ton of guests in the u.s and so what they did was they actually made the return address to a friend in the u.s and then used u.s postage which i was like oh that's kind of smart too that's really like smart. they just had their friend yeah, collect so there's lots them. of different ways to do it Uh uh-huh yeah so you can get tricky with it but like my default would be not to do it in most situations because like I feel like for most of the guests I have if they have people who are abroad it's like one family's in Spain and the other family is in like New Zealand and the other family's in Japan and it's like all those countries have different postage so there's you know Like, when you encounter that where there's just some, like, outliers of people who live out of the country, I would just err on the side of, like, not doing it. But, like, your situation makes sense. Now that I'm thinking about ones where I've, like, sent to other countries, we've just put, like, the normal U.S. stamp on them. But they just, they're like, oh, we'll just contact them to get their RSVP. Like, we just want them to get the invitation or whatever. Okay. So, like. You know, like one-offs. I don't, it really depends on a lot of the situation. It It does. does. (laughs) There's no right answer. So... If you guys have questions that you would like us to answer on a Q&Cake episode, just visit bizbirthdaybash.com slash Q&Cake and submit your question there. And please leave us a rating and a review on iTunes. Sadly, there is not any other place to leave a review besides that. <laughs> yeah, not the wedding wire. <laughs> yeah, not the wedding <laughs> not. wire or the knot. But I know a lot of people who listen to us on like Google Podcasts are super bummed because they can't leave a review. But yeah, yeah, iTunes is the go-to place and we love reading each and every one of them. We seriously do. On a bad day, I like to go and just read them to encourage myself. It's always really nice. Yes. Also, before we end the episode, I do need to bring up one thing. <laughs> Uh-oh. What is this? I just need everyone to know that Elizabeth didn't wear underwear <laughs> with her leggings the other day. And she said, okay, that she liked it. <laughs> It was a mixed reaction for me because I understood where you were coming from. I really did. Because I was like, I get the appeal of this. And also, I feel like I'm basically naked. Like, it was such a weird feeling for me. I was entirely conscious the entire, like, I was conscious the entire time that I did not have underwear on. And it was weird. (laughs) And it was weird. But... That just goes to show you guys, you should at least try it, the 80% of you do, because Elizabeth did, and you should too. Okay, <laughs> that's all I have to say. Just try something new, I guess, even if it's not wearing underwear with your leggings, which I am wearing leggings today, but I'm wearing underwear with them, so sorry. I'm wearing leggings, and I am not. <laughs> well, of course you're not. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. Okay, all right. now we can wrap up. I just thought it's been weighing on my chest, and I needed to say it, so... 
I love it. I'm glad that you told everybody. You're so welcome. All right, guys, we love you and we'll talk to you next week. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Hey, Tammy Mae, I have a few questions for you, if you don't mind. Well, Elizabeth, you're always as lost as last year's Easter egg, so go ahead and ask them. Thank you so much. All right. Let me look here. I wrote them down. What printer do you use in your home office? And what watercolor paper do you recommend for those beautiful paintings you make? Also, do you have a favorite brand of paint and a favorite paint brush? Because I would just love to be able to use those to make something like you do. And lastly, I'd really like to know how the heck you scan in those artwork paintings to your computer and make them look so realistic. It just looks like they've been painted right on that screen. Elizabeth, I tell you what, sometimes you are as useless as a steering wheel on a mule because you just got all kinds of questions. But you know what? Where you can find all of them answers, you just got to go to bizbirthdaybash.com slash favorites. You know, Cammy and Elizabeth, them real cute girls who talk about paper all the time. And they're just the cutest things i ever seen. Well, they put together an Amazon resource list so you can just shop it whenever you want. It's shoppable. You just click the links. It takes you right to the products they use. And who doesn't love Amazon with that two-day ship and it gets their lickety split? Oh my gosh, those two girls are just heavenly angels sent from the Lord themselves. I can't believe they would go out of their way to do something so nice for us. So where is this again? Do I have to use the intranet to find this? You got to get on the line, okay? So you just got to get on the line and you just go to bestbirthdaybash.com forward slash favorites. Once you go to that page, you're going to be grinning like a possum eating a sweet tater because it's got all the good stuff. We got printers, scanners, their label printer they use for shipping, Cammie's favorite watercolor brushes, Elizabeth's favorite calligraphy paper. I mean, it is all right there. And let me tell you, that just deals my pickle. You know what I'm saying? I can't believe this. All right. I got to get a pen real quick. Can you tell me one more time what that link is so I can write it down right oh, here? my word. Elizabeth, you're please, I'm, I'm going to tell, tell, tell you right now. I have been bit more time. I will <laughs> tell you if you just hush up, okay? All right. So, you know, I'm busier than a cat covering up crap on a marble floor. So, just hold on. I'm getting right to it. Here is the link, y'all. Okay. Write this down. Bizbirthdaybash.com slash favorites. Go shop all of Cami and Elizabeth's favorite supplies and office resources. You can do it. Bizbirthdaybash.com slash favorites. I'm so excited. I'm about to dial up right now. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs>